you all for coming. I am Chris Dorsey. I'm the Bureau Chief for IowaPolitics.com. We are a nonpartisan political website based here in Des Moines. And I want to stop, uh, start by saying we are sponsoring this event with Drake University. And I want to give a special thank you to the State Historical Building who has helped make this event a huge success. And with that, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Calagiri and Mark Janak. Uh, today's guest uh, became the youngest person ever elected to the UN, uh, United States Senate <laughs> in 1972. Uh, Senator Joe Biden actually had to wait until his 30th birthday before he could take the oath of office. For three decades, he has served as the, on the Foreign Relations Committee and now chairs that committee. He has authored the Violence Against Women's Act and played a significant role in the COPS grant program to put 100,000 cops on the street. He's married, has three children, five grandchildren, and he is making his second presidential run. And with that, let's begin our program. And I'm going to ask a series of questions, and then what we will do is open it up to you. So, and ask the question as loud as you can, and then I will repeat it, all right? Last night, in the, hour, in the, in the U.S. House, the uh, voted on the act to pull the troops out of Iraq by the spring. Will the U.S. Senate follow the same course? I hope so. Uh, some of you may remember that uh, it was the so-called Biden Levin Amendment that the president vetoed that did exactly what the House finally voted for, not finally, fortunately voted for. I have been proposing in a comprehensive plan I put forward a year ago four pieces to it. One of the four pieces was that all combat troops be out of Iraq by March of 08. It's essentially what the House passed this time out. My hope is that we will follow suit and that the Senate will pass um, this again, essentially the same version of the original. We now call it, excuse the Senate Parliament, it's now referred to as the Reed, the Levin Reed Amendment. Um, and uh, the bottom line is, is, unless we change course in Iraq and get our troops out of the middle of this civil war now, any possibility of a political setting, any possibility of us leaving without having traded the dictator of chaos, evaporates. And so it is my earnest hope that the Senate follows suit from the House this time. I believe we have a chance. We're picking up more Republican votes. But I want to be, I want to level with you and everybody else here. And I know it's like I'm being you know, the skunk of the family picnic. The truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, we need 67 votes in order to override the president's veto. And I'll conclude by saying, I got a little bit of, I got a little bit of criticism last week, I forget which one of the Sunday shows, I apologize, you haven't seen me on so many Sunday shows in the last five years. But um, uh, I pointed out, I guess with CNN, that this president is impervious to the facts. There's a famous expression, there's a famous expression made famous by Oliver Wendell Holmes, the Justice on the Supreme Court. He said, Prejudice is like the pupil of the eye. The more light you shine upon it, the more tightly it closes. I would paraphrase that with regard to President Bush. The President Bush, reality is like the pupil of the eye. The more you mention it, the more tightly the eye closes. He says, I, mean, I really mean it, folks. I am frustrated. I am genuinely frustrated that this president has rejected, rejected the facts on the ground consistently, consistently. And so the end result of all that is, I'll end by saying that we will not end this war during this president's tenure, which is essential to do, <laughs> until we embarrass 17 Republicans to stop voting for the president and start voting for the troops and for the public. 
we've seen in the recent weeks that some of the Republicans are growing kind of tired of it and starting to go to the motion to get out. How, how many votes are you at in the Senate right now? I think, uh, let me put it away. I, I did one of the morning shows this morning, and uh, national shows, and um, uh, interviewed by a Republican, and I made the following statement, and he, he agreed with me. I said, I do not believe there are 12, I don't believe there's even a dozen Republican senators who agree with the president. I don't believe there are even a dozen. The question is, when are they going to break? When are they going to have the courage to step back, break with the president, knowing they're going to alienate 30% of their base? They're going to make, because the real, I think, and I, presumptuous of me to say this, but I think there's this, between September and January, you're going to see a calculation made by a number of Republican senators. That is, wait as long as they can to break with the president, but break soon enough that it doesn't cost them the re-election. <laughs> no, I, I sincerely mean it. And so folks, uh, there is hope. But the only way it's going to happen is if the leadership of my party, and they've been very gracious to me so far in following the recommendations I've been making along with Carl Levin and others. We just got to keep pounding away. I know it's frustrating to those of you who are Democrats. Frustrating that we keep coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. It's not to change the president's mind. It won't change. It's to change the mind by putting overwhelming political pressure on our Republican colleagues to start to vote what I know the majority of them in their gut know, that this is a failed policy we must change. And these are your colleagues, and you know, yeah. do you believe in your heart that they will change? Yes. Yeah. Matter of fact, I will not give away any of them because I, well, I need their help. I need to get them. <laughs> but by the way, everybody said, were you surprised by Dick Luger? I wasn't surprised at all. Dick Luger and I have been having this conversation for two years. Dick Luger, if you notice, every time I hold a hearing in the Foreign Relations Committee, he agrees with me. Dick Luger, the leading Republican intellectual in the Senate on foreign policy, has been agreeing with the Biden plan, in essence, for the last two years. So the question is, are my surprise be broke? No. It's inevitable. But the question is, the longer we wait, folks, the more people die. Yeah. The Amen. longer this takes to happen, the more at risk America's interests are. Look, I don't want to, I have a son who's a captain of the United States Army, National Guard. His unit's been notified that it's ready to go next year. He's the Attorney General of the state of Delaware. He's gonna go. And God love him, he'll go. I don't want him to go. But guess what? I don't want my grandson going 10 years from now, or 15 years, my granddaughter going 15 years from now, or 10 years from now. So how we end this, how we end this, how we get out, is going to impact upon whether we're sending our grandkids back. And the longer the Republicans wait to do the right thing, the harder it's going to be to get, we're going to get out. We have to get out, period. But it's going to make it difficult to get out in a way that leaves something behind that's not chaos. The longer this yes. goes on. Can you summarize that plan? I can summarize the plan. The best way to do it is this. Some of you remember yesterday a lot of news broke about, about uh, foreign policy. What you heard three things. Number one, you heard Bob Woodward, because it was all over the national television, a famous reporter. Bob Woodward recounting that last November when the Baker Hamilton Commission, that was the bipartisan commission made up of former Republican Secretary of State and member and a, a leading Democrat named Hamilton, who was a former congressman, recommended a path in Iraq, and made 72 recommendations. They went down to speak to the President of the United States. That same day I went down to speak to the President with quote congressional leaders. 